bulletin. Let's take a look at this real quick. I want you to, as you take your bulletin, I want you to take your Bible at the same time. I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 13, I'm not Revelation, Romans chapter 13. We want to take a look at something here real quick. The reason we want to do that is because I couldn't fit it into the message and I wanted you to hear it. So uh, Romans chapter 13, it's in the bulletin, not every verse, but a lot of them. Uh, anyway, folks, as we as we look at our bullet, bulletin, uh, as far as uh, uh, coming events and everything on this page here, our missionary of the month, our missionary of the month is the, is the First Baptist Church of Westland. You are our missionary of the month. We need to do everything we can to to have our presence felt uh, in the in the city of Westland. I, I I say that, and at the same time, I tell you. It's amazing to me that the Supreme Court just uh, just knocked down a uh, 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 desire for churches in California to meet with over a hundred people, and they said it's not unconstitutional to really uh, uh, overthrow uh, the the uh, um, freedom of religious practice clause in the First Amendment to the Constitution. What a sad thing that is for the for the for the Supreme Court of the United States to say anything like that, and they just said it Friday night. Now, now what that means it's it's for a limited purpose because they're saying because other people are who gather in groups are limited in the same way they can limit churches like that. But that's not what the First Amendment to the Constitution says. Um, the, the First Amendment of the Constitution says, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. There's nothing there other than that. That is a statement that stands alone by itself. Uh, government shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, meaning that it's the, that it's the uh, you don't pick one church, by the way, and it's right to say church, not religions from around the world. You don't pick one church over another and make it the state church. This is a Christian nation. Uh, you, you, so, so respecting an establishment of religion, the government cannot do that. And then it says, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The government of the United States cannot make a law prohibiting the free exercise of religion. So that means I think we can fit 270 people in here. If we wanted to sit 270 people in here today, the Constitution says that the government, not the federal government nor the state government, can make a law prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So if you are in Revelation, uh, Romans chapter 13, I want to read some things here real quick because I couldn't fit it into the message. So uh, let every subject be, uh, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Folks, now I just want to tell you that people are to be subject to the higher powers. Government is meant to be good for people. A government that is bad for people is an illegitimate government. But if the government is trying to keep peace, and you are throwing Molotov cocktails at them, there is something wrong. Government. Um, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, folks, that means punishment both here on earth and, and if they're not saved, it means punishment for eternity. But, but folks, when people do these acts, they should be punished by a lawful nation. They should be punished. Um, the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Uh, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now, the problem in America today, and I've preached this in the past, I said, and in the past, I've said, the day may come that when you do good, they're going to punish you for that. We are there today. What a sad thing. We are there today. Uh, but, for he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. 
for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil, upon him that burneth down the business of a man who could not afford insurance for the last three months because he's had no income, so he has to figure out what to cancel, so he cancels his his insurance, and then some thug comes and burns his life down. That's what's going on in America. What a sad thing. For he is the minister of God for thee to good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. He is a minister of God, a a, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute, tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, nobody's fulfilling the law when they're burning down people's buildings. And that, and, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for how for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Folks, we need to pray for our nation. Our nation is on the brink and we need to pray for it. I think a lot of people prayed last night when we sent out that message Because really, you know, nothing happened in Minnesota. As far as I know, maybe one building caught on fire just a little bit. And we asked people to pray. I think prayer changes things. Of course, we asked for people to pray for the entire nation. Uh, But folks, you see, we read this passage is in the Bible for a reason. The government is supposed to protect the good and stop and punish the wicked. I hope that starts sometime soon. Uh, Anyway. Please stand and turn to page 360, leaning on the everlasting arms.
Okay, folks, if you could take your uh, Bibles and turn to uh, turn to Psalm 82. Psalm 82, uh, and we will be uh, we will will be t- actually taking our time uh, reading through uh, Psalm 82, and uh, and uh, we're gonna we are just going to study uh, this chapter of the Bible today, Psalm 82, and. Um, I keep uh, flipping too many pages. All right, Psalm eighty-two, and uh, but folks, we'll get there. We'll get there in a minute, and and um, and so I just uh, um, today I want to ask a question, and here's the question, folks: Where are the grown-ups? Where are the grown-ups? I just want to know where the grown-ups are in America. How many people? Uh, have to have their lives destroyed because of one or four bad police officers. I have a hard time actually even calling them police officers considering what I have seen with my own eyes. Every person across America who has spoken up from a law enforcement perspective as, as has condemned the actions of these police officers in the strongest language uh, in America and probably around the world. There is no question from what we know so far that there was something very wrong there. Uh, no doubt. Uh, to see people becoming angry about the death of George Floyd is completely understandable. The reporting is that a a business owner called the police because George Floyd, who had lost his job, was trying to pass a counterfeit $20 bill. Also reported was that Floyd was from Texas and he moved to Minnesota to get a job and he had a job and then he lost his job. Uh, because of the Wuhan China virus. And that's exactly where it came from, and that's why he lost his job. Uh, uh, and so uh, what, a, what a sad thing. And, and so he also was the father of two children. All of this is very sad. This man lost his life over evidently what was less than a $20 bill. Evidently it was just a piece of paper. There is something grievously wrong with this whole picture. Uh, Unless there are other things involved that nobody knows, this whole thing is horribly unjust. But finally, the, the city or whoever has lodged charges against the head police officer uh, among this group uh, for what he has done. All four of the officers involved were fired. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, But for all the law enforcement agencies that are involved in this case, unless there is something we do not know, uh, uh, to not make an arrest for at least three days, uh, this whole thing was fueling the flames of discontent. Folks, I want to tell you, uh, I have heard several times that that, uh, all uh, that is needed to make an arrest is probable cause. Now, now, folks, what, what I'm saying here, it's all true. But that's not what's going on in America today. It's all true. Uh, you do not have to have all the evidence for a complete 100% conviction to make an arrest. Now I want to turn the page to another travesty. Why is it that in America, when a crime is perpetrated on one person, we think or accept that other completely innocent people must suffer as well? That's not justice. That's not honor. That's not law. That's something else altogether different. And it's sad. Do you not know how many, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I do not know how many buildings were burned down to the ground 
or how many businesses have been completely destroyed with untold numbers of people now losing gainful employment uh, at, the, at, the, at the worst time imaginable. What I understand is that as of the end of Thursday night, 170 businesses in Minneapolis have been destroyed. How many people in this time uh, that we cannot afford something like this who have been looking for that chance to finally open a business that they put everything into, how many people, owners and employees as well, now are hit twice as hard? Now, because of a lack of backbone among those in authority, a great deal more has occurred since Thursday night. So all of this brings about a question. And I said it a moment ago, where are the grown-ups? There is something wrong in America. How is it that a nation that was founded on God and the Bible has traveled so far from its foundational moorings? How did that happen? This is not a nation of men. This is a nation of laws. And the foundation of those laws are the Bible. What has happened? And I have watched as hundreds and hundreds of people have been breaking the law. As they smile for the cameras knowing that nobody will pay for the crimes of literally destroying entire American cities. What is going on? Next thought. Three days ago, during a news conference in Minneapolis, for the second time in a second major city in America, I saw a prominent person who was a excuse me, but homosexual transvestite from the city council of Minneapolis, in this case, the, the, I believe the chairperson, I would say, I guess, of the city council, get up and sing a verse of amazing grace of all things. And the person singing, who by the very definition of his God-hating life, was pretending to be a woman, the chairman of the city council, singing Amazing Grace. What a sad thing. And blaspheming the God of heaven, who is the true founder of the United States of America. There used to be a congressman from Ohio who has now passed away uh, by the name of James Trafficant who used to stand on the floor of the Congress of the United States of America, and he used to say, beam me up, Scotty. There's no sign of intelligent life down here. And that's what's going on in America today. If you are a Christian who is familiar with your Bible at all, you must agree with this sentiment in some way. The exception is that we believe in the God of the Bible. And we say not what James Trafficant said uh, in these days uh, that are obviously as bad as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And now Psalm 82 and verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Now notice with me, that's a small g. Now, so what that means is among people in great positions of authority. Now, they, now, now folks, they've been on the television for an entire week now, flapping their gums. That's who this passage of the Bible is talking about. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Accept the wicked. 
Destroy the honorable and the honest and the just while you accept the wicked. So the Bible says, Selah. Take a minute and sit back and think about that. Selah. God is looking down from heaven. And he is saying, hey, you rulers of the people, what is wrong with you? Why are you allowing criminals to go unchecked and destroy the lives of hundreds and hundreds of innocent people? So God says, think about it. Why do those in authority constantly allow wild and unchecked criminality to continue? Why is that happening in America? You see, folks, it's a spiritual battle. And the devil right now in, on, on the streets of America is winning. And Christians need to stand up and be counted and tell people what's right and say boldly what's wrong and speak up for God and pray. It's a war that's going on. Trump calls it the invisible enemy when he talks about the Wuhan virus. There's another invisible enemy that's far worse than the Wuhan virus. And it's spiritual wickedness in high places and in state houses across America. Now that God has your attention, in verses 1 and 2, America, that is, if there is any hope left at all, if there is any person in authority in Minneapolis or Minnesota or even in America that believes the Bible at all and that can be corrected by what it says, God has a message for those in authority in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Detroit, Brooklyn, Columbus, Denver, Louisville, Las Vegas, or any other of the 30 or 37 cities thus far in America that are going through this. What's the message from God? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. My friends, justice is blind. That's why Lady Justice in front of the Supreme Court has a blinder around her eyes. Justice is blind. God says that the role of good government, that's why I wanted to read Romans 13, God says that the role of good government is to defend decent, law-abiding citizens. I don't care if you are in a different political party. I don't care if you vote in a different way. I don't care if your skin is a different color or if you have a different accent. You are supposed to defend the poor and the fatherless. If you are in positions of authority in a good government, if all the governments of America are, have become so evil, we need to pray, we need to preach them, and we need to promote them out of office. Every one of them. Who is poor today? Let's think about that. Who is poor today? Well, I would imagine George Floyd up until this last Sunday, was poor because he had lost his job because of the Chinese virus that was uh, purposely delivered to America and the rest of the world by a godless communist government. The government is supposed to defend the poor. But Floyd wasn't the only poor person in Minneapolis or the rest of America. Millions have been made poor by this communist virus. And the responsibility of good government is to defend all of them. Not let their life be flushed down the toilet. Government is also supposed to defend the fatherless. 
George Floyd's children now need a government that will do everything legally possible to defend them. There is no circumstance in the created universe where a man must lose his life because he tried to pass a fake $20 bill. Good government is also supposed to do justice to the afflicted. It's what the verse, verse, it's verse 3, it's what it says. It's supposed to do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Well, what have we been talking about for the last three months in America? We have been talking about businesses and families who have been afflicted and now made needy because of what the government has decided to do in response to the Chinese communist virus. Whether right or wrong, the president says that he understands and he knows that we're doing great harm to America. And he knows that. But these people that will never let anybody open back up, they don't care about that. Shutting down the greatest economy in the history of the world because of a virus that arguably is, is not, no worse or not much worse than a bad flu season borders on insanity. Millions and millions of Americans have now been made needy and have been afflicted by the government. Now the government is supposed to protect them. Now the government is supposed to help them. Now the government is supposed to support them. That's what the Bible says here. This is exactly the opposite of what, uh, what's going on today is exactly the opposite of what good government is supposed to do. Do justice, government. Let the people of America go back to living their lives. So now let's look at these first three verses again. Psalm 82, and just we'll just read right through them. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. My friends, we could talk all day about verse 4 and what it says here. Uh, I believe that at least 90% of what has been happening in America over the last three months has a great deal to do uh, with the wicked having their hands on the neck, uh, speaking of asphyxiation, of the citizens of America. But I don't have time to talk about all that right now. I need to focus my attention on the immediate wickedness that has taken place since Monday. When this verse says, rid them out of the hand of the wicked, why would we be, uh, who would we be talking about uh, in this context? How many of you understand that there were many businesses in Minneapolis who had placed big, bold signs outside of their buildings with a statement like this. This is a black-owned business in big, bold letters. Why do you think they put that on the outside of their buildings? Now, let me tell you something. If it was a black-owned business, I don't blame the black owners of that business for putting that on there. Listen, if I can put some kind of sign on my building that says, I'm, I'm a purple geranium, please don't destroy my business. If that would do it, I would put that on there. So I don't blame the people for putting that on there. Uh, so I guess uh, they would be saying, please do not burn down this bu building because we are black. So evidently the people thought that the people who were burning down most of the businesses were just angry about George Floyd. That is not true. That is not what is going on in America today. There are black people, white people, and maybe purple people in Minneapolis who've got brooms and shovels and who are trying to clean up Minneapolis today. 
So do you start to get the idea that this has nothing to do with the death of George Floyd? If you're getting that idea, I think you're getting the right idea. On MSNBC on Thursday, Al Sharpton, I don't believe any preacher of the gospel should use the name Reverend. But there are some people that are the furthest thing from Reverend on this planet. And this man is one of them. Uh, Al Sharpton said this with exclamation points. Some of the stores that are being damaged are black-owned stores. Oh, Sharpton exclaimed. So we cannot become so reckless that we are destroying each other in our rage. What does that mean? In other words, don't burn down the black-owned stores, only burn down the white-owned stores. What else would that mean? I say don't burn down any stores. I say live righteously. I say live godly. I say protect the poor and the afflicted and those who are suffering because of what the government felt they had to do because of a virus and stop the criminals from hurting people. And don't be out there inflaming people to get worse and worse and worse. The title of this message is Where Are the Grown-Ups? The mayor of St. Paul yesterday was speaking about the destruction of black-owned businesses. Why wasn't he speaking about the destruction of of the businesses of the people of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Why was he only talking about one group? Folks, I'm, 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 I'm not being racist in one iota. I'm just telling you the truth. People ought to, ought to live for truth, ought to live for godliness, and ought to, ought to stop the garbage. That's what's going on in America. America is being flushed down the drain by people who just refuse to accept righteousness and godliness. <sighs> Psalm 82 and verse 3. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. I do not remember who it was, but I believe it was the mayor of Minneapolis who said that many people uh, uh, who were arrested on Friday were from out of state. Who are these people? By the way, can I tell you something else? A whole lot of these people who are being arrested are white people with black clothes on and sophisticated masks. Uh, air uh, masks to protect them while they have backpacks who I don't know maybe have incendiary devices at them in them that they're throwing at police officers from the back while everybody uh, you know get and they agitate the people who's doing that it's people who want to destroy a constitutional republic by the name of America it, I feel sorry for George Floyd. What's going on has nothing to do with black and white, and it has nothing to do with George Floyd. It has to do with a bunch of people who are trying to destroy the United States of America. But where are the grown-ups? What are they doing? Why don't they, you know, and they do see this. The United States government sees this. They know it. Other people know it. It's time to stop it. So I would think that it has been well established that the poor and needy are all the businesses and people who have been suffering for the last three months, uh, 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 this last three month long shutdown of the American economy. Most people are poor and needy today. 
Good government is supposed to defend these people and not just watch their lives go up in smoke. There is not one person that I know of or who I have heard speak on this matter that doesn't think that this police officer committed murder. I believe with all my heart this guy committed murder. Let me tell you something else. I didn't know it until like two days into this. You know, there's one police officer standing there. I feel like the guy's a cadet of some kind. I feel like maybe he's a young cop. He don't know what to do. And he's standing there, and this guy's 20-some years on the force, and people start coming at him. He starts pulling things out of his pocket like he's going to uh, beat their brains out with a stick or something like that. And so the people, the citizens, back off, and this one cop's just standing there, and I'm thinking the whole time, I'm thinking, where are the other two cops? They're talking about four police officers. Why don't we see the other two cops? And then two days ago, I saw the other two cops. Where were they? Who knows where they were? There were three police officers. One had his neck on, on, on George Floyd's throat. And he's crying for his mother. And he's crying for everybody else. And he's saying, I can't breathe. And then you, another video comes in and you see the other side of the, car, of the car. It's not one police officer on this guy. It's three police officers on this guy. If any one of those police officers would have gotten off of this guy, he might have been able to jerk his body around enough so that he could get a breath. Who murdered this guy? Well, I think you call it whatever you want. I think three people murdered this guy. I don't know what to say about the other guy, but that's just my personal opinion. Who am I? I'm not, I'm not a legal professional. I'm not a law enforcement officer, but I just saw it with my eyes. And it didn't look right. But that is not why America is burning down today. So every person I've heard talk about this has said that at least that first officer committed murder and should be in jail. And that was, that was the visceral response of everybody who saw this. I don't care who they were. Uh, they all thought this. And so at least two of the other officers were guilty as well. Three of them were kneeling on top of this man. And so there's something wrong here. The destruction of America is about a society that has gone mad with sin. Now, Psalm 82 and verse 5. 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. This nation was founded upon the Bible. But the people who are running our cities today... Uh, have have no idea what God says about good government and crime and punishment. They are ignorant of God's laws, and by the way, they are uh, they are willingly ignorant. Willing, that's what the Bible says about the last days, folks. Willingly ignorant. If you mention God, they will hold their hands tight over their ears, and yet. All of their decisions and all of their laws uh, of the land uh, uh, should be based upon the Bible. As I said, this land was founded on this book. You can read, I said it a bunch of times, but you can read all the arguments of the founding fathers. They're always talking about this book and how we should order this a government according to the Bible and according to the God of heaven. They cried out, they pled to the God of heaven for his guidance. So it was founded upon the Bible. But the people running our cities today have no idea what God says about good government and crime and punishment. What an ironic thing. The people making and interpreting the laws today seem to be lawless. They will never learn because they cannot be taught. So we need to pray that they get voted out of office. And that's somebody who believes the Bible and believes in morality and decency and godliness and society and civilization, 
gets voted into office. These people spit on the truth and defame the God of heaven. When a government is good, justice, decency, and morality are predominant. But in America, all of our institutions are on the brink of destruction. How else can you explain city and state government that that stands back and allows insurgents to destroy the lives of hundreds and thousands of people who have already been hurting so badly? I personally believe that the greatest criminals in, in Minnesota are the people sitting in the seats of authority. Three or four bad cops destroy one family, and then the government destroys hundreds and perhaps thousands of families in response. Well, let's look back at Psalm 82 again, verse 6. So it says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So the psalmist justifiably cries out, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. This, the psalmist, he sees this. He sees wickedness in government. And he said, God, please come down. Listen, folks, we don't take the law into our own hands, but we, we serve the living God. And we pray for God to bring justice to a land gone mad. And so that's what the psalm, psalmist is doing here. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now we want to do a little Bible study. I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 3. And then we're going to have you look at Genesis chapter 1. And then we're going to look at Acts 17. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 3 and verse 25. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now watch verse 28 here. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You know what we're reading here in Galatians chapter 3? We're reading that God condemns racism of all sorts. We are not one ethnic group or another. We are all Americans. I, 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 I could say I'm, I, I'm Irish American all day long, you know. And then people think I eat too many potatoes if I say that. But I mean, I could say that, but, but, I'm, but I'm not. I'm happy to be a Christian. I'm happy to be a child of God. I'm a citizen of heaven. But I live in America, and as long as I live in America, I'm an American. I'm not Jew, Gentile, or anything else, and this guy against that guy. There's something wrong with the person who thinks that way. I lost my place. There it is. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's what God said to Adam and Eve. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And then you look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20, and we see, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. You know what we just read here? We humans are all from the same mother and father. So why are all of us kids in the same family doing harm to each other? We are all Adam's children. We have the same blood flowing through our veins. There is only one race 
And there's, and, and there's just something wrong. I, I, I get so upset when I see, like, like, for instance, this is 2020, so there's going to be a census. And the census is going to say, what race are you? Well, well, folks, listen, my only answer is that I'm the human race because that's what the Bible says. I'm a child of Adam, and so is everybody else. Eve is the mother of all living. We have the same father and mother. We are all Adam's children. We have the same blood flowing through our veins, and, and it is sinful and fallen blood. <clears throat> there is only one race. It's the human race. By the way, <clears throat> as I said, it's a fallen race, and we see it on the streets of America today. Acts 17 and verse 26 and 27 say this. I have made, if you didn't believe the first verse, here's the second verse. I have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. God says uh, through, uh, through a Luke that we are all of one blood. Now, according to Acts 17, every nation in the world has the same blood and is supposed to be seeking after God to determine how he wants them to order society. Psalm 21 and verse 15. It is joy to the just. This should be nailed to the walls of every state house in America. Every police precinct every city council building, it is joy to the just to do judgment. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The day is coming when people will answer for the sin that they've committed. Now, so I hope you can bear with me just a little bit longer, but I want to just, just a little bit, but I want to give you as much as I can while I have you here. Uh, that's according to, according to uh, Proverbs 21 and verse 15, uh, good leaders want to do that which is honorable and just. It gives them great pleasure. It gives them great pleasure to see that God is honored in society. A good leader gets great pleasure for the name of God being uplifted. By the way, not many gods, the God of the Bible, being uplifted in society. But this brand of political leader that will not immediately pronounce that a bad cop is bad and that will allow entire cities to be destroyed are heading for personal destruction according to the Bible when they stand in front of God. John Adams said, I could do a lot of things in society, not in the message, but he said, I could do a lot of things to society if I did not know that there's a just God who I, who I will stand in front of someday and give an account. Well, the people in America, I heard a guy, football player, last night. I, I, I don't know. I, I think he played for the New York Giants. Well, he said a lot of things. One thing he said was, was, was that we need, to, we need to have a day. This is what he said. We need to have a day of prayer and fasting and repentance in America. We need to repent to the God of heaven. We need to ask God to forgive our land of their national sins. We need to, we need to, we need to stop the sin and we need to turn back to the living God. Uh, I can't I can't think of the guy's name, but he's absolutely right. We need to get on our knees and we need to ask God to forgive us for our sins in America. So Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse 11 says this. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. 
because, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. You know what I've been hearing a bunch of talking heads saying recently? They've been saying that the more you allow people to take and take and take, the more they're going to take, and they're just going to keep doing it. And, and, and there, needs to be, there needs to be justice. So what we need in America is a brand new brand of politician. We need people who will quit dividing us, but instead point us to the God who created us. And so the question is, where are the grown-ups? Isaiah 33 in verse 15. He that walketh righteously, this is the kind of politician we need. He that walketh righteously, this is the kind of law enforcement agent we need. And speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, don't give me a bribe, get it away from me, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and that shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. This is the kind of person that we need in authority in America.